The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. We praise you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth that proceeds from the Father, he will testify to me. And you also testify, because you have been with me from the beginning. I have much more to tell you, but you cannot bear it now. But when he comes, the spirit of truth, he will guide you to all truth. He will not speak on his own, but he will speak what he hears. And he will declare to you the things that are coming. He will glorify me, because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Everything that the Father has is mine. For this reason I told you that he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, you cannot enter this basilica and not be struck by the splendid mosaics composed of millions of little tiles. Together they give us an image. Separated, they would be merely little colored stones. Missing, they would be holes. Pentecost celebrates the gift of the Holy Spirit that draws all believers together and empowers them to give witness, to make manifest the action of the Holy Spirit and to have the fortitude to put the Christian mandate into action as Jesus told us in the Gospel. St. John the 23rd opened the Second Vatican Council in 1962 with these words, We have every confidence that the Church, in the light of this Council, will gain in spiritual riches. New sources of energy will be opened to her enabling her to face the future without fear. By introducing timely changes and a prudent system of mutual cooperation, we intend that the Church shall really succeed in bringing people, families, and nations to the appreciation of supernatural values we are reminded 
of the tongues of fire on the Pentecost morn, which symbolize the transforming power of the Holy Spirit. The Catechism recalls the prayer of the prophet Elijah, who arose like fire and whose word burned like a torch, brought down fire from heaven on the sacrifice on Mount Carmel. Jesus will say of the Spirit, I came to cast fire upon the earth, and would that it were already kindled. The spiritual tradition has retained this symbolism of fire as one of the most expressive images of the Holy Spirit's action. Do not quench the Spirit. The first reading reminds us of what happened on that first Pentecost. The poor Galilean fishermen who formed the Apostolic College were frightened and locked in the upper room. They feared that they would be subjected to the same fate as their Lord, even though they had spent time with him after the resurrection. Yet the Spirit descended upon them, and they burst forth from those locked doors and began to preach the truth. So powerful and so universal was their message that the audience, a mosaic of cultures and languages, heard them speaking in his or her own language. Once, in my first parish assignment, we tried to imitate that experience. Four of us read the first four verses of the passage from the Acts of the Apostles in Greek, French, English, and Slovenian. Then we continued to read in those four languages, all of us at the same time. It was one of those experiments that probably should not have happened. But I'm a priest of the 70s. <laughs> it was an attempt to offer the congregation an experience of that first Pentecost. Filled with the Spirit, however, the apostles announced a challenging mission and managed to pronounce the truth of the gospel throughout the known world of their time. The Holy Spirit is able to bring about a deep communion of faith that crosses the divisions of language and culture. A deep communion is being formed and still exists. The transformation of the apostles draws our attention to the power that each one of us has been given. Even today, we can draw on that power, divine grace, and proclaim to the world our faith and build up communion. Being witnesses to the gospel does not necessarily mean that we stand on street corners and shout to passers-by. It can mean that, but the most effective preaching will be a virtuous life. Paul talked to the Galatians about the works of the flesh and is telling them that these must be absent in order to manifest the effects of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The fruits of the Spirit then demonstrate that we have truly corresponded to the eternal life into which we were baptized. We have so many powerful examples 
of these fruits in the lives of the saints depicted in the Trinity Dome. We also see them in our commitment to Catholic charities, Catholic relief services, our schools, hospitals, and so many other forms of outreach. You know from your own experience what you do to manifest the action of the Holy Spirit at work in you. Each one of us is a piece of the mosaic, different in shape and in color, but each mosaic preaches the active power of Christ in the world today. Pope Benedict XVI, whom I quoted at the beginning of Mass, stated, the church, in fact, lives constantly from the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, without which she would exhaust her own strength, like a sailboat without the wind. Pentecost is renewed in a special way in certain powerful moments, whether this be at the local or the universal level, whether it be in small assemblies or large ones. That is why our sinfulness, or the works of the flesh, to use the Pauline term, diminish the manifestation of the Spirit. They contrast with what is preached. There are no private sins that have no effect on the health of the body of Christ because sin diminishes our link to the vine, which is Christ, as the gospel reminded us a few weeks ago. Pope Francis makes it clear that we are all works in progress. And I quote, all of us are called to offer others an explicit witness to the saving love of the Lord, who despite our imperfections offers us his closeness, his word, and his strength, and gives meaning to our lives. He continues, our falling short of perfection should be no excuse. On the contrary, mission is a constant stimulus not to remain mired in, in mediocrity, but to continue growing. The witness of faith that each Christian is called to offer leads us to say with St. Paul, not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. The first reading does not include the message preached by St. Peter, but the next verses indicate that it was anything but politically correct. He denounced his audience for failing to recognize Jesus as the Messiah and putting him to death we are reminded, as an author put it, there is something in authentic Christianity to upset and challenge everyone. Jesus gave very clear warnings about losing saltiness, that is, the clarity and savor and distinctiveness of Christian teachings. It is sometimes said in support of changing long-standing Christian teachings on personal morality that the Holy Spirit is doing a new thing. It seems curious that the Holy Spirit's new thing regarding sexual morality and the sanctity of life should so closely resemble the dominant moral views of secular society and it should have been detached only in Western countries just at the time when adherence to the old thing is starting to bear significant personal, professional, and social costs for Christians. 
salt brings out flavors and upsets what is bland. Light helps you to see what is really there. It allows you to see to avoid an object that might block your path or to read what is actually written on a page. My own experience living in developing nations where light was not always a constant has taught me much about what happens when it is weak or absent. We must not forget that when we were given a candle after baptism, along with the instruction to carry the light of Christ along our path to the fullness of life, we use that light for ourselves and to show the path to others in season and out of season. Just as the pieces of mosaic work together to project an image and call attention to the whole, so also we, my sisters and brothers in Christ, form the body of Christ and are charged to proclaim with clear witness the truth of the gospel for all to see. Rejoice in the gift of the Holy Spirit and make manifest his power. Lord, send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth.